Alright, alright. Let's get started again. We're back at it. Another week. Another delightful commentary. So, uh, my name is Carlos. This is Scarlet and Sable. I've been weathering this Land Raider for what feels like my entire life, and we're going to keep going. So today, i um, showing you a little nifty trick I learned from Lincoln. That's you use the Tamiya Stirring Stick. Uh, or I'm sorry, you use the Badger paint mixing tool and then you clean it off into the solvent. Uh, keep it in a little old Tamiya jar. Pretty handy little tip. So I'm going to be using flat black mixed with Mr. Leveling Thinner at a 70 to 30 ratio. Thinner to paint. I'm going to be applying it to areas that I think would be like an exhaust. So I'm going to build it up very slowly and you'll see it start to build in particular areas. So something that I want to mention is that when we're doing all this stuff, a lot of times when you read or watch other videos, a word that always is mentioned is called layering. And you can see the layers are beginning to build up for us. Each thing that we do is a different layer. You don't necessarily need to do just one thing. You can always come back and do another, another pass of what you did. And the idea is to keep the layers transparent and subtle. And as you build them up and build them up, it'll begin to actually appear like a, a genuine patina that's built up over the course of several years, decades, or however many battles that this thing has done. If you want to think of it a different way, if you're familiar with maybe a uh, amplifier network or maybe like an equalizer for music, each one of these particular effects is like a slider. So as we move each slider back and forth, we kind of get to our sweet spot where we want to be. Maybe I want more dirt. Maybe I want more uh, smoke. Maybe I want more chips. Maybe I want something. Although chipping, chipping is kind of, I do it early on now. And I think that it's, you can always go back and, and add a little bit. But anyhow, that's, that's beside the point. So now I'm starting to add in the dirt. So this is an optional step. This is actually, I'm taking this, this is a page out of, um, uh, Mr. Ruiz's technique of the black and white. He, in the book that I read, he usually does this kind of spraying on of the dirt. And as we learn with the Toronto Barbican, we're going to do it on the bottom of the model. We're going to see how our paint's laying down. The, the ratio stays the same, 70-30, thinner to paint. And I'm just going to start to build it up really slowly. I'm going to build up that dirt. You have various options when it comes to this. This is kind of a this is not necessarily as heavy an application, although you can go heavier over it. This is just sort of providing like a background, another layer for the dirt. And you see it's going to add almost like a, like a reverse highlight, a highlight lower on the model. Even though it was pretty light down there, it's going to lighten up that area. This is uh, the deck tan color. So this is something that you would do at a, as a preliminary. I kind of didn't go real heavy with the, with the groundwork on this, mostly because I didn't really want to use the, the VMS pigments or any other type of pigments. I think I do use a little, but I didn't, I didn't necessarily want to go ultra heavy. And also, when you think about it, if this thing is actually, if it's still moving or able to move, it's going to be scraping along the ground and scraping off all that stuff. So while there's still, well, there will be a little bit caked up, there's not going to be a lot. And these particular tanks are not like more modern tanks. So you see it hardly has anything exposed underneath. It's just flat track. So how much dirt is down there, it's up to you, but just know that you're going to have to put it on a table somewhere if you're using it in that way. So that's something to think about. Um, I'm going to do a dual layer with the dirt. I don't want to get too crazy with the dusting, but I am going to add a little bit. Now, I think what happens a lot is what people do is they completely swamp the bottom of the model with the color. I don't necessarily like that. I'm not saying it's not realistic. If you look at some examples, there's plenty of vehicles that are just completely caked in dust and stuff. But the problem is, is that once you start to go to that really strong in one direction or the other, you lose all of the layers, all of the subtlety, all of the contrast, all the nuance. So I want to keep it lighter. And you can still see it. I think it's relatively apparent what we've done. It just doesn't, you know, I think that uh, in this case, less is more. It's, that's always the answer. Less is always more. One of the things that I do with the dusting, 
as you can see, like, I don't know if you remember, if any of you had watched it, but I mentioned that some of my blending or some of my pre-shading was particularly flaccid along the uh, sponsons. And even on the back of where the chain link turrets are, I actually didn't hit it with some paint. You can kind of cheat a little bit with this stuff and kind of like maybe add in a little bit of blending using this dirt and other effects. So that's why I don't necessarily think that it's never... It's never a good idea to, to not review your model and see where everything's laying down, but it's also you can kind of fix things a little bit if you come back with your um, with all of your other weathering layers. So it's not all is lost. It uh, looks like this is the flat earth, but uh, I guess I'm done with the deck tan on this side, so I'm starting to go in with the flat earth. And the, the ratio is the same, 70-30. And uh, this is a darker... This is kind of a darker dirt color to maybe signify either a heavier dirt, a different type of dirt, or a, maybe a little bit moister. As you go closer to where the dirt just landed, it should get wetter. And again, you can look at examples in the real world. It's kind of like if you look at a very, very muddy, dried, like a truck that has dried mud on it or dried dirt, it's kind of, it, it can be very uniform. It's not as interesting. So this is... Maybe not realistic, but we're adding in that visual interest that we're we're always looking for. So again, I'm I'm just adding it to the different areas that are all over uh, the tank, blending it in, hitting the nooks and the crannies. One of the things that I think is really important to remember is that you know, this isn't necessarily the last thing that you're going to do. So I think it's always important to remember that, like, with this particular process, you can add in um, more of color or you can come back with a pigment or something. But this is like, in and many times this will be covered up. You'll lose a lot of this effect, and that's fine. You can always come back with pigment and then add to it. So I'm going to continue to go around the tank and just put this into the deeper recesses. I just want to take a minute and thank all the new people who've come along. Uh, I've added quite a few people in the last two, three weeks. I think now that we're finally into the weathering, people are starting to get interested. It was a bit of a tease. I started this a while ago and I uh, showed the finished uh, model and then uh, it's taken weeks for us to get to the actual weathering. So, you know, my, my thought process when I first started was like, have everything finished, have everything in the can, everything ready to go, and then kind of dole it out. Um, so it could be like a progression. But I don't know. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Would you rather see uh, just the good stuff? Do you want to see the entire process? Do you have any other ideas? Because honestly, after this video, I don't know. I'm probably going to take a break, but maybe, um, or I'm sorry, after the series, maybe you might want to see something there are limitations i do have you know i i did have a little bit more free time recently but hopefully fingers crossed things start to return to somewhat some kind of normalcy anyhow you know again appreciate everybody who's added and i hope that you guys all get something from this so you can see uh, one of the things that I'm doing here is I'm going into the recesses where I think the dirt's going to lay. And it's it's worthwhile, and I don't show a lot of it in this video, but it's worthwhile to continually review the model, spin it around in your hands, make sure that you have covered all of the areas with paint, and kind of review how everything is laying down. I think it's a good idea to take a take a step back every once in a while and evaluate and believe me it's it's hard for me because I'm so impatient I always want to just see it instantly 
but this is you know this is a, a it's a slow burn and it's a it's a fruit that takes a while for it to uh, really ripen so you just have to kind of cultivate it <laughs> we're, we're going strong with the horticulture today <laughs> so, while you're cultivating your fruit look at your model spin it around and see if it's if it's if it's really happening for you and if it's not maybe you know think about why not a lot of times when i when i am going to sleep i think about weathering and i think about <laughs> painting and i i realize that's it uh, doesn't sound as normal as i thought it did when i was saying it anyways it's something that I do give a lot of thought to. And it, the funny thing is, is that we spend so much time doing it and we we invest a lot of our free time thinking about it. And then when it actually comes to doing it, for me, sometimes I'm like, oh boy, I just want to move on. And you have to appreciate the process, man. I really, I'm, I'm mostly just speaking for myself. I need to slow down and just enjoy it. On this one, I really wanted to hit a middle ground and I felt like having... I was doing it for the sole purpose of education of, for others, and I, I did want it to be, I wanted to do a lot of stuff. I wanted to go pretty heavy on the weathering. So I feel like I, I definitely was a bit more measured and also having the pressure of getting it done assisted with that. I wanted to make sure that there was at least some quality, despite the fact that the build, it's a total turd, but <laughs> the, at least at least the quality of the weathering, I think, is better than the quality of the build. So... And I'm building it up here. And you remember I was talking about how we're sort of having this this conversation while we're painting this thing and we're sliding these things back and forth. So I've added a little dirt there if you wanna if you wanna go back later and I believe I do, I don't do it on camera, but later on I kind of I retouch those that exhaust port on the rear, I make it a little bit darker again. That's something that you just have to kind of uh, gauge for yourself what you want to bring out what elements you want to highlight this side actually okay so that that side maybe I just didn't hit it as dark or I didn't hit it at all I know later I do come back with the with the uh, with the black but this side you can see was already very dark and I'm adding in the the, the lighter flat earth it's kind of lightening it up and I can change that and I don't have to do it just with an airbrush if I want I can use a darker pigment and come back and do the same and that's it's really up to you and the more stuff you put on there you know it's gonna look better here's another place where I kinda like try to I try to cover up how terrible a job I did at highlighting those sponsons I succeed maybe not as much as I wanted I'm incorporating this chain link uh, or I'm sorry assault cannon into the finish uh, it's important to that's that's another thing one of the things that I've historically struggled with is I I used to build models in many different sub assemblies so I'd always forget to kind of a particular stage on a particular sub assembly so that's why it's really good to slow down and look at the whole thing and make sure you've got all the pieces onto the model and this is the final part what I'm going to be doing even though you can't really see it initially is I'm just going to be I'm gently flicking the trigger and I've lowered the pressure super low uh, actually all the way off and then I just kind of gently start adding pressure I have a Mac valve which is a it's an adjustable valve on the hose and so I can ad adjust the pressure without needing to touch the compressor until I get that nice speckling and all I'm saying here is that you adjust the speckling until you have the size of speckles and the transparency and all that stuff you have to do it for yourself there's not really anything anybody can tell you about how to get the proper consistency or size of speckle so just play with it uh, have fun all right guys that's it see you in the next one <laughs>